Alright everybody, back to Sunless Sea. Let's just hit the continue button and see how long it takes for me to die. It's still complaining. It's still telling me that I can't fire through islands. doing the thing where the it loads but it doesn't want to it's not responding in the corner there it goes ah epic music okay so 17 and 14 and I think before I leave I'm gonna buy me some some more food I only have 55 cheese and it's uh it's pretty expensive for food let's go ahead and we'll just spend a crap ton because I'm gonna go out well I'm gonna go out farther than before I hope that it's not too loud for you guys I'll give me a second There we go. Hopefully that's not too loud. Alright, let's launch on out and get out of here. Let's go fight some bats. You know, because they're like the bane of uh, Fallen London's existence, as we learned from the beginning. Not those bats, though. Or this bat. It's my bat. Oh, and this this is a merchant ship. They just kind of hang out in different parts of the water. Let's go ahead and see what he's up to. Yeah, um, and you can talk talk to the crew, and sometimes they have information. In the bleaching glare of the lens, among the smells of oil and metal, you sip tea and chat. The Z's terror recedes. So yeah, it brought my terror down because I decided to relax on this random ship just out here in the middle of the ocean. Oh, and I have a story. That's cool. It's actually really easy to collect stories. Like, if I had done the collect 100 stories, it's really easy to collect stories because just go around to the different towns and uh, just talk to people. All right, let's launch on out of here. We'll go this way. Let's see what we can find. I didn't, oh well, I guess, I guess I'll just die. I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit. There we go. If you saw that odd little transition, that's because I couldn't see my meter, so I had to move the video down. Hmm. Creeping tendrils of fungus, seaweed, unnameable flora. We enter the snares. Alright. I like that name, the snares. I think I'll slow it down a little bit so I'm not using my gas so fast. Send my bat out. Ooh. Pygmodi Island, wait. What? No. <laughs> See, look. There it is. That's what I'm talking about. No, 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 no. <laughs> Go away. Go away, gr creepy, glowy crab. No. Leave me alone. And those. This is, uh, wow. I think monsters galore over here next to make the Pigmodi Isle. And I think this is the one with the mice? Maybe? Ugh. Only a desert beach. There is no habitation in sight, no market, only an old rotting dock. A stretch of sand thickens into damp black earth from which sprout stunted palms. Not quite. Tall fungal growths with frond like caps, as if someone had sculpted the idea of a tree from a mushroom. Disembark, see what awaits you. War? 
As you step onto the quay, you hear clamor, shouts, and shooting. You can see off in the distance smoke rising from beyond the hill and dots of fire flecking the horizon. Two tiny figures stand a little further down the quay, unmoving as if awaiting your approach. I love that the music changed for the aisle. A literary interlude. The following is an extract from the popular Diary of a Z Captain from London to Iram and what we did there before we arrived. Washed ashore on Mutton Island and subsequently serialized in the Unexpurgated, Unexpurgated Gazette. Okay. The author's identity remains unknown. The Tale of Pigmody Isle in which a delegation is made, a choice is presented, war is declared, a most singular treasure is sought by all, and a new empire is founded with tooth and claw. So yeah, I think this is the one where it's like, the two rodent factions are fighting. Yeah, and <laughs> we have to decide who wins. Chapter 1, The Delegation. The figures were rodents. To my left was a radis favor, wearing goggles, a blacksmith's apron, and an assor assortment of tools. To my right, an unusually large guinea pig, wearing a helmet and breastplate reminiscent of nothing so much as the high middle ages. The rat stepped forward first and bowed. Welcome, Captain, to Ratstar Island. I am Edgar, second chief of engineer of the third rat brigade. I invite you to avail yourself of food and fuel at our expense. The only cost to you is a choice. The rat stepped back at precisely the same moment with what appeared to be the ease of long habit. The guinea pig scuffled, or scuffled, scuttled forward and made a declamatory chirp. Welcome, Captain, to the Isle of Cavia. I am Lady Augusta Devereux Swinch of the Blackwater Swinches. Seneschal to our King Gracenaw, first of his name. I invite you to avail yourself of food and fuel at our expense. The only cost to you is a choice. The two stood at attention, looking at me expectantly. The two remarkable rodents sat squatted, both seeking my support. I knew I had to choose carefully. So let's speak to the chief engineer. A rat in the making. Oh, well. His eyes had a wave, cold glint to them, and he wore his scars like jewels. I asked the chief engineer to elaborate. He looked at me for a long, measured moment before speaking gruffly. We came to this island to make a home for ourselves away from London, its cats and snuffers, its rat skin suits. Rat skin suits. Okay. <laughs> we came to live as citizens of our own republic. We came with our tools, our teeth, our clever hands, and we made a beautiful city by the light of the rat star that shone bright and blue on Mount Ar Ararat. The chief engineer nodded towards the distant hill. One day we braved the depths of the chicken woods, and from the top of Mount Ararat we plucked the rat star to be our light, our beacon. But the pigs of Cavi saw the light and they lusted for it. They sent armies to rule us and steal our star. We will not permit them to take what is ours. We will resist to our last breath. Will you join us in defeating them? I spoke to the Seneschal. How did an armored guinea pig manage to look regal? A knight out of habit. The Seneschal cleared her throat with a delicacy to rival the Duchess such as his own before speaking. Grace now the king, our lord and sovereign, full seven months had sojourned on the sea, conquered this land and won the southern main. Now t no fortress against him shall remain. No city walls be left for him to gain, save the rats that squeak behind mountain. Unlikely was the lamb of our deliverance, assured shall be our glories on their fall. When our lady's eye restored be to our hall. The seneschal composed herself and added, We saw truth and beauty by the light of our lady's eye on Mount Caveat. But the rats with their guns and their chatter and their peasants' politics stole it from us. We will s subjugate them and take it back. They are a rabble, and we will rule them with the steel-shod velvet of our paws. Will you join us? And I think... I don't remember. I was ready to make my choice. As you can well imagine, I faced quite a dilemma. Their red eyes stared up at me, waiting for my choice. I sided with the chief engineer. He seemed grumpy but honest. Also, I knew all too well what rat-made weapons can do. I favored the Seneschal. Was it her charm or a fondness for London's ratskin coats that swayed me? Perhaps a little of both. At any rate, I was keen to find out more about their civilization. I attempted to broker peace. Surely their commonalities are more numerous than the differences. Perhaps I could help them get along. I'm gonna do that. My words helped them reach an agreement. The chief engineer and the Seneschal shared a look. 
then regarded me with scornful amusement. Yes, smirked the chief engineer. You're obviously much cleverer than us. Oh, much, murmured the seneschal. You clearly know as much, us much better than we know ourselves. Apparently, idealism would not help here. Ugh. I think I'm going to go with the chief engineer. A friend to rats. I extended a finger to the chief engineer, who shook it grimly. The seneschal hissed and chatted her teeth in disgust, but kept her distance. You've made the right choice, the chief engineer. Let me show you around. <laughs> I have no idea if I... Uh-oh. Okay. Prepare for long reading. The chief engineer led me to the northern side of the island, skirting the chicken woods. We passed through a number of what can only be termed checkpoints as fierce-eyed rats shouldered their derringers and saluted the chief engineer. It's like a uh, Secrets of Nim up in here. Soon we come upon a small colony, smaller than some of the infestations I had encountered in London flats, perhaps only 50 rats favor altogether, working diligently to fortify their side of the island. The first thing I noticed was a brilliant light beaming out from a stump of chicken wood about six feet high. It bathed the whole settlement in a clean blue glow and was almost too bright to look at. By its light I could see several raised mounds of earth, suggesting shallow tunnels. An efficient fishing operation was set up by the water, an albino rat mending nets while others stabbed sharpened sticks into the waves. Further inland was a barracks where a sergeant barked drills at a small squadron of fighters. My arrival drew attention and several rats paused in their work to look at me curiously. Welcome to Marinia, said the chief engineer, voice warm with pride. It's not much to look at now, but it will be once we've rousted the cavies. Take a stroll around while I summon the war council. With that, he vanished into one of the mounds and left me to explore. Um, I took a look at the rat star. Hmm. Visited the barracks. Let's go visit the barracks. The drill sergeant appeared to be sizing me up, were the few rats around here really all she had to launch an attack. We were fighting impressive odds. I approached the drill sergeant and went so far as to salute her, which earned me a grunt of satisfaction. My guy is a... he's a war veteran, so I don't remember if the person I played with before ever did that. The sergeant dismissed her troops and offered me a bit of chicken wood jerky to gnaw on. There's more of us below ground, she explained, but not enough. The cavies are bigger, and there's more of them. We're better with weapons, but haven't got the stuff to make them with. Most of us came here as stowaways and brought nothing but food, tools, and the fur on our backs. We can fish, and we nibble the chicken woods, but we can't make guns out of trees. The cavies came with their own steamer and seem to have endless supplies. We raid them sometimes, but there's so few of us, and we can never hold on to territory gained for long, but that's of no consequence. All we want is to be left in peace to build our republic and the Rat Star, she added thoughtfully after a moment. Of course we want that, too. And I took a closer look at the Rat Star. An excitable-looking rat was peering at it through smoky goggles, twitching her whiskers and making notes on what appeared to be real paper. Even better, my character doesn't question at all that these rats and guinea pigs are sentient and talking, but I guess once you live under here with all this madness, then talking rats is like, psh, it's just a regular Monday, man. Or Friday, I guess. Today's Friday. Blue is a sapphire, but endlessly more brilliant. It's not a star, of course, not really, but trying to explain that to others, the chief engineer doesn't want me working too hard to convince them, says this is better for morale, but just look at it, look. She offered me her goggles. I managed to work them over just enough of one of my eyes to see the truth of what she was studying. It was scintillac, but unlike any I'd seen before, blue is a sapphire, but more brilliant. Something about the clarity of its color was tremendously soothing. The chief science officer tittered with pleasure as I handed her goggles back. Those of us who've been to the cavy side of the island and live to tell of it say that there's plenty of glow there, plenty of bright in the water all around, but nothing like this. We took this from the island's center, not our rat, only it's not a mountain, of course. Any more than this is a star, it's hollow, there's sweet water inside and coral crawling all up the walls of it, but nothing that glows save this. It's ours now and no one can take it from us. Huh. I kind of want to leave and come back, but I don't know what might happen if I do. Yeah, I 
think oh oh no it won't let me leave <laughs> okay let's go see the the rat on the on the beach who's doing the net stuff an albino rat smiled up at me from his mending work looking dainty and a little shy chicken wood floats especially when it's dried out and sealed so we're able to paddle out a bit and cast our nets we come up with all sorts of things blind fish crabs sometimes a chunk of broken tentacle fantastic squids am i right but the fishing would never be so good without the rat star, he beamed. I think it only draws good fish and keeps the scary ones at bay. I just saw a giant crab monster and an eyeball thing, so you're, you don't know what you're talking about. I know the chief science officer doesn't believe it, but I do. She's right. <laughs> that light is our livelihood. I don't think it gets out much. The bells of the war council ring. I was summoned. Okay. Um, the chief engineer emerged from underground with a motley assortment of other rats. He introduced them as weapons experts, strategists, and field commanders. So you're going to help us beat the cavies, he said, a hard edge to his voice. But how exactly? <laughs> what? I had a ship. I had cannons. We would steer her to the southern side of the island and have those, have at those uppity animals. That's because of my irons. I wonder if I can... I had nothing to offer but my advice. A charge. The cavies had the advantage over the rats. To prolong this much longer was a sure path to defeat. I advised them to put everything they had into one desperate assault on the beach ship. Unhappily, they concurred. The sound of gunfire and screams echoed as far away as my ship, where the crew and I sat and watched. Few of the rats that marched forward that day returned to the light of the precious rat star. Those that did return bloody and shaking, yet in triumph. It was as much as they could have hoped for... If hard to call a victory. <laughs> Whoops, I guess I should have just blown them to bits. The house of Cavi had fallen. Marinia was triumphant. All that remained were the celebrations and the continuation of our voyage. Oh, how we feasted long into the night. Then... Yeah, I'm gonna... Oh, this is what I did last time, I think. I interceded on behalf of the Cavies. They were crushed, defeated, and I could see their spirits broken without the light of the Rat Star to guide them. They needed an advocate. So I'm gonna advocate for the cavies because I think they were going to put them to death or use them as slaves or something. I appeal to the chief engineer's moral fortitude and sense of fair play. Perhaps the cavies suffered the loss of the light from the center of the island. Perhaps they were only trying to get it back, not steal it from the rats. The chief engineer looked troubled at the thought. We only wanted to be left alone, he said. He looked towards the seneschal, haphazardly bandaged among the rats, other prisoners. Perhaps further negotiation is possible. As I left, I saw the albino rat timidly offering a young cavy prisoner a piece of fresh fish. So, we got some stories. Uh, I'm gonna ask one of the ratus paper to join us. After all, what's a ship without a few rats? True. The chief engineer couldn't leave his colony, but he relayed my request to his people. The albino rat I saw mending nets shyly stepped forward. I'm good at fixing things, he said earnestly, and I'd like to see more of the world. I awaited, or I waited for him to gather up some effects and say goodbye to his family before accompanying him on board. So now I have this guy on my ship. And time to get back out there. We had eaten our fill and our business was concluded. It was time to continue our voyage and see what other wonders and terrors still awaited us. The end. There, you finish your diary entry and the final dregs of the rat's surprisingly good wine. They line up to salute you as you leave the victory banquet, escorting you to your ship through the foundations of their new republic. So yeah, we're all happy now. And we helped found a new nation. Alright, um... Officers, so yeah, now... See, this guy gives me a plus one to hearts, but this guy gives me a plus one to veils. So I'm gonna put him in place of my comatose ferret. He's my little mascot. Oh, and the surgeon should probably go do surgeon-y things. Um, okay. Let us get out of here. We'll go ahead and head out this way. See what we can see. Probably more monsters or creepy underwater um, eyeballs, which there are a bunch of those. 
There are also underwater mouths. <laughs> yeah, I think so. They're super disturbing. Let's go ahead and send out the bat, see if he can see anything. Shepherd, oh, Abbey Rock to the northeast. So the Sisterhood, I don't remember what this is. It might have like, the oh, the fog. If you go in the fog without your lamp on, your terror starts going up really fast. Like, your crew does not like going through the fog if um yes yeah, Zaylor is praying yeah they they do not like going through here without the lights on there's another crab that looks either like a ship or it could be a uh yeah a tower oh okay it is it's a tower. <laughs> I was really hoping it wouldn't be like a big old ship. Let's see what the sisterhood at Abbey Rock has to offer. A black spit of an island far from anywhere anyone would want to go. Trade supplies. Resources are limited on this bleak rock. The Sisterhood will pay a fair price for supplies. Not a good price, mind. Go ahead and compile a port report that I can take back to the Admiralty. Knock at the iron studded gates. Although far away, a great bell tolls. Drizzle begins to fall. You sneeze. Okay. Watch the, the convent. Wait a while and see. The convent is silent. A few lights prick its bulk. Bells sound the times of prayer. You're almost ready to give up when a side door opens. Four nuns march out, carrying something wrapped in a blanket, and fling it into the sea. You creep down to examine it. It's... While it was likely unidentifiable, even before the nuns used it for weapons practice, now it leaks fluid from a dozen punctured wounds. But it still smells of a Z. Oh, so the, the nuns are, like, ninja nuns. Search the surroundings. We can't be the first to come here. A map, a mask, the face beneath. Someone died here. Far from home, long enough ago that their flesh is gone. Okay, so it's bones. A visager by the look of their frog mask. The mask will be worth a bit. The skull would look good on a mantelpiece. And what's this map? Cool. I, I, uh, I collect uh, skulls. Awesome. Oh, what? <laughs> I gained five terror because my captain's a freak. Uh, excuse me. It's not my fault it was so interesting. Alright, launch time. And we do want to make sure that we have enough supplies to make it home. Um, or at least to a port that has supplies. Because if you don't, you'll, your ship will just stop moving and uh, your crew will flip out. Oh no. Oh, it's a jelly floor! Leave me alone, ho. No. Oh, here it comes. Is he gonna do it? Oh, they do this thing where they go whoosha, and like slam into you really hard. I wanna just fake him out. He's gonna be like, hey, I just wanna play. No, don't touch me. Oh, oh, shoot. Nope. Oh, this right here, full power. You don't wanna hit that too much. I only use it in emergency situations and it's to get away faster. If you hit it too much, your engines will explode, <laughs> and that sucks. He's gonna have to come around here to get me then. Loser. He's gonna come over here and punch me in the face with his eyeball. If I don't watch my tone. Oh, there's another ship. I'm not here. I'm not so much worried about the ship as I am about the, um... The jellyfish. Shepherd's Isle. Of course, the bearded watchman tells you there are no actual shepherds on the Shepherd's Isle. Okay. <laughs> sheep are mostly illegal here. What? Why would you even have sheep underground anyway? It seems like a bad place to raise sheep. I'm just saying. No, indeed. It's just the name of the gentleman that found the islands. Greybeard sitting in the village square nods solemnly. No sheep, one says, but plenty of tails. Ask us anything. <laughs> 
let's have a picnic. The bearded villagers will sell you mutton stew and kefir and stone bottles of cold fresh spring water and row you over to the stones. A peaceful afternoon. Your sailors watch the fireflies shimmer. Swamp shanties pass round the grog, shy stones at the moor, vampirically inclined sea bats. Grasses nod in the breeze across the dark water. The lights of Abbey Rock glow watchfully. Let's go file a port report. In the bleak light of the false stars. Surface roiling like porridge pot, up with a roar of steam and flash of fire. Three windows swim in tentacles, and then we saw his highness. There is rather a lot of this material. I mean, crazy stuff. Oh. Yeah, I don't have this guy. If I did, then I could bring him here, but I don't have him. Yeah, I don't have enough money. Alright, we might have to end up fighting this ship. I'm not sure if we will, but if we do, then I'll try my best not to get blown out of the water. So far, it's not so bad. I'm surprised. Usually, I'd have already been, um, like, attacked five times, but my luck, it won't hold out, it won't hold out for long, I promise. I want to run into something in a little bit, and I'm going to cry run away from it. Let's see. Where are we? Hmm. Oh, what? Oh, no. <gasps> That's bad. That's really bad. That's a huge pirate ship. Mm -mm. Go, you two fight. You guys have it out, right? I'm just a, I'm just a lonely Z captain. There we go. They're going to argue. I saw him first. Yeah, but my ship's bigger. It's the salt lions. Yeah, from here, home is pretty much a straight shot. I think I can pretty much just go that way and um, find Fallen London. You might think that my tactical retreats are cowardly, but trust me, those freaking pirates will mess me up. Alright, the salt lions. There is a vast sorrow in their empty eyes. Two basalt beasts, cathedral sized, they frown eternally at each other across the black waves. The north one carries an encampment. Creeping human figures eat away at its features like rot, pick, pick, picking. There's a sudden, or there's a sudden, there's a supply dock below. Visit the Unmakers. I like that name. The Unmakers. I want to be one. Can I do that instead of what I'm doing right now? Muscular pick wielders rest on camp stools watching you approach, passing hip flasks around. An unctuous overseer beckons you to sit. Fungal to sane and tea cakes. We get funding from the bazaar, it's true, but station at Four? I wouldn't call us Station 4. It's a little grandiose. The stones are stuffed with secrets, but most of them are used as garden statuary or occult, bal occult ballast. Most of them. Some go down to the places under the bazaar. More tea cakes? <laughs> How polite. <laughs> but I lost some terror over tea cakes, so that's nice. What? Oh. Yes. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and head back on across to fall on London, which yeah, see, if I just go straight down, then I'll be there in no time. And I think I, yeah, I definitely have enough fuel and food to get back. I think it usually takes, it doesn't take very many to get, to get across from here. do that? I'm gonna do it. <laughs> That's awesome. 
She undresses you and stands scowling at you as if choosing where to make an incision. Okay, I am gonna... I, I, um... I changed my mind. Don't do that. <laughs> then, fingertips and the point of her tongue. She's not exactly impatient, but determined and precise, and she knows exactly what will produce the most intense sensation. Your vision blackens near the end, but she never quite goes too far. When you are too drained and dizzy to move, she gives you a smug look that you could possibly interpret as affection. I don't like this, this, uh, this part right here. This, uh, as if choosing where to make an incision. I think I changed my mind. I, I don't, uh, sure. Come and eat with me. Does she will to fork the way she wills a surgical instrument? Well, if what just happened is anything to go by, hopefully not. Precise bite sizes. The cooked flesh arrives still in its shell. From the claws, eight legs, body, and head, she renders a dozen neat bite-sized piles of shredded flesh sutured with mushroom or pinned together with a needle of chitin. Perhaps she has missed a calling as a chef? She denies it. My mother was a child of a surgeon in the first city. You might say that knife work runs in the family. There is a wicked, quirking smile at the corner of her mouth. Then there are the rumors about my father. She would deny there's any truth in those. I don't, uh... Spend a secret to improve your hearts. Even though um, I want to do my irons, I kind of think my hearts, they're also important. Exchange. Exchange. It's a straight trade. One of your best discoveries from one of hers. It's not hard to drive the bargain. She sits back after dinner and tells you this. Most people think that the hard part of surgery is finding what's wrong and taking it out, but any fool could do that. A ship's cook with a, cl a cleaver can have that part of the job. The hard part is cutting so you can sew it all back up again afterwards. And she demonstrates on a shark fin, leaving it in a better condition than it started. Cool. Her father. She becomes more talkative when she has something to cut. Perhaps you can get her to say more about her father. There's a flincing, deboning, and orderly arranging of scales from large to small. This was the creature's favorite organ, she says, working briskly with tweezers and blade. Don't touch it. The purple bits are toxic. She only turns to personal matters when she's had a chance to rinse her fingers. I get my proficiency with metal from both sides of the family, she says, watching your expression closely. Then, mother was a favorite with Mr. Iron. She says that they only work together, that Mr. Iron sponsored her work and provided her with tools. Sharper, sharper tools that do not bend so easily. Alright, I know I have to have this in order to talk more. Okay, well that was cool. And a bit terrifying. I should have gotten plus five terror for for that first remark that she made. Don't go cut into me, lady. I need to ankle myself. There we go. Oh, it's a hello. Discovered Eakin Rock. Oh, that's where the bridge is. That's cool. Stalagmites loom in the distance. Like the cranes of Woolstat docks, but oh, I'm reading that. But vaster, vaster. The Corsair's forest. Our lookouts are watchful. So yeah, people are. Um, they always get wary around here at the Corsair's forest, because there's always something here trying to uh, trying to eat me. It sucks, but yeah. Yeah, let's go ahead and go back home and are you shitting me? Get paid. And uh yeah. Get supplied and then I think that'll be it for tonight. Of some of sea. My pirate. He's gonna be super disappointed when he realizes he missed me. Oh, shit. He was still really close. I didn't realize it. No, I don't want to fight. Leave me alone. Not today, Captain Jack. Back off. There we go. Oh, it's Hunter's Keep. I'll have to come back up here 
um, later. I'm going to go ahead and head down to um, Fall on London, and I'll come see the sisters later. Their story actually gets more interesting. That's why it's one of my favorite places, because they have a really, really neat um, happening going on over here. Oh yeah, and here, your zailers are always happy to be back in home waters because there's no monsters to eat them. Oh, something changed. And this map is also randomly generated. Um, some stuff won't be in the same places every time. Vendebrae is, and the sisters' place is, but there are some places that just switch around, so you can never get a real concept of where everything is. Uh, yeah. Yep, something has changed. Oh no. <laughs> Stabbing the blind faces pack. Oh no. <laughs> Good evening, sir, and what a marvelous evening it is, if you don't mind my saying so, and given it is my impression you are an obliging sort, I imagine you will not mind at all. As long as you don't stab me in the kidneys with your steak knife. And since you are so very obliging, perhaps you wouldn't mind making a little detour via Mount Palmerston. With a few articles of cargo, if you happen to be in the area, the cheery men will of course cover your expenses for this trifling inconvenience. Oh... Sure. It is only, after all, a trifling inconvenience. Brilliant souls. I'm transporting souls. I also work as a uh, necromancer on the side, if you have noticed. If you would be so kind to deliver this little gift to our friend in Mount Palmerston, then they will see we... We'll see we get to hear about it. And when you come back, we'll cover your expenses. Bum... Boy... Arch... <laughs> As my aunt, who was French by birth, if not by inclination, used to like to say. Sure. <laughs> He's so creepy. <laughs> the alarming scholar. Yeah, he, she likes stories. Oh yeah, yeah, let's, uh, you can have that. Yeah, we get paid for weird stuff we bring her. This would be so terribly wasted in an ossuary, she, he, buffs the cranium with a sleeve. I think a climbing briar rose will suit this one rather well. A yellow rose, perhaps. Thank you so much. Let's keep this between ourselves. I brought her that skull that I was going to put on the, my uh, mantle. It's for the best. Thrilling. Let me hear every detail. First, I must find my fountain pen. Oh, how regrettable. It has a spider impaled on the nib. Excuse me. Let me... Good heavens. It's still alive. Pass me that volume of Gibbon. There. There we go. Do you have another pen? I don't. She creeps me out, too. An outlandish artifact. Shaped by hands unknown in London. We have something like that. She... He declares, but not very like that. Interesting. I have some ideas about suitable fees. Oh, nice. A hundred echoes. And that's it. You have business to attend to, and besides, the scholar keeps snapping his, her, teeth like a mechanical trap. Let's go talk to the Admiralty. Uh... We do hear some peculiar tales of that place, so I can try and see what happens. Whoops. Yeah, they're not they're not buying it like, oh sure. Anyway. <laughs> Abbey Rock, let's turn that in. We categorize it as a military installation, you know, although that has occasioned some quite vigorous debate. Well the nuns do use weapons, so I don't blame you. Pigmodi Isle. I'm not certain I heard you correctly. Are you quite certain this is a report you wish to make? So be it. Yeah, they're like, yeah, rats and guinea pigs finding, sure. Salt lions. They're making some pretty good money this time around. Ooh, I can talk to this guy now. The Admiral. I don't want... Aha. Uh -huh. He looks like a... 
like a spy. It looks kind of like that dude from Lilo and Stitch. You're ushered into his office off Mansion's Pyre, a cramped room with a vast desk. He surveys you across the desk. Ah, yes, the merchant captain of whom we hear such complicated things. Oh, I can get more work. It's turning into Skyrim. Okay. Um, ask if the Admiralty can provide a little fuel to cover your costs. Let's do... Oh, wow, these cost quite a bit. The rats have fallen on Dinar are remarkably skilled engineers, and they know ships well. They are not, however, reliable. Payment is in kind, not currency. Well, let's do that. Yay, I fixed my ship. I just had a bunch of rats. Fix my ship. Rats sweep your sweep over your ship like tide. Day and night, their tiny tools click. Your crew step over them cautiously. Eventually, the rat tide withdraws. How good a job have they done? Well, pretty good. What? <laughs> I came to five terror because my ship was full of rats. Cool. Okay. Mm Let's go to Thor's Market. I can take people there. Just gives me something to do. Go here and read the news, so I have a new story. It's the same story as before. What? Oh, it's the wrong one. Hmm. I can get a tattoo. I have need of a reliable agent, failing that an inventive one. Here are my requirements. Do this now. He has very specific needs, but he'll pay much better than market rates, and he won't ask how you came by these things. <laughs> Do you want the souls I have? Pretty interesting. Oh, I guess I can't. I don't have enough weird stuff to talk to him yet. Bolts of spider silk. Well, I'm not doing that. Okay then. Let's go ahead and buy more food. Yay. Yeah, there we go. <coughs> I don't think I have anything to sell because I can't sell those souls, so I'll get yelled at by that guy with a knife. That's all I can do. Okay. Uh, yep. I guess that's all I can do. Alright, well. Let's do this. 